it wouldn't be a true MCU release if it wasn't wrapped up in some sort of controversy on the internet. Well, here we are again. So let's talk about King Valkyrie, the king of Asgard, the king who's female. Yep, yep, that's the controversy, everybody. So first and foremost, before we get into this, I know people are automatically going to jump into the comments and start talking about how women can't be kings, despite the fact that you literally had King Mary of Hungary. <laughs> Just to name one off the top of my head on top of multiple others throughout history. So you can just go, I don't know, look up female kings, I guess, on Google and um, enjoy history as it was. Anyways, though, Tessa Thompson, a.k.a. Valkyrie herself, King Valkyrie, if you will, has been met with all sorts of controversy because obviously um, people on the Internet say women can't be kings and it doesn't make sense. But in an interview with Games Radar, oh, we learn a little bit more. And essentially, this is progress, story progress in terms of what happened so far with the MCU and of course the title being passed down and Asgard no longer being a thing because new Asgard exists and essentially that we have to see the film to see why exactly she is king also how she takes those duties and what it means to be the king of not just Asgard for lack of a better term but what new Asgard is what it presents and of course if you watch the trailer and the TV spots you see that she doesn't really look like she's interested in it like almost like she's bored because of this like bureaucracy that exists and i think that's all going to play into it and i think quite obviously thor leaves so somebody needs to take the spot naturally goes to her because thor trusts her so to me this all works i have never really had a problem with this i mean the moment we found out we talked about this on the cbc cast and we were all like yeah um that's how history kind of works there's been female kings and queens. So, you know, it's a thing. Um, I guess in the year 2026, 27, whatever it is in the MCU when this film takes place, uh, they're just kind of all up for it. So that's cool. I'm interested to see how it's actually going to tie into the bigger plot, though, because to me, it's more interesting to see if there's going to be any sort of backlash against it or anything, because that would be an interesting angle for them to put on the MCU. But again, we just got to wait and see, and hopefully this will play out into the future, and we can see the exact reasoning in the film, and then maybe people will understand it. It kind of brings me back to the uh, casting of Heimdall. You guys remember that controversy? Remember that? When we find out, oh no, Heimdall, they're going to change his color, and the internet was upset. And then everybody was like, you know what? He was pretty damn amazing as Heimdall. And I was like, yeah, of course, it's Idris Elba. Like, like there was any damn doubt. 